frosty motion fanatics. Up here in the Northern Hemisphere, tis the season for shit to get slippery. So I thought it would be a good idea to teach you how to create some growing frost in Cinema 4D, X-Particles and Arnold. So slap on some snow tires and let's hit the road. Once again I find myself in Cinema 4D with a scene with nothing but a sphere in it, and some lights to make the sphere look lovely. The first thing we need to do to cover the sphere with frost is to create an X-Particles emitter. Let's also move that emitter out of the sphere so we can see what the hell's going on. And what's going on is that it's shooting particles straight through the sphere. There's a few issues with this, the first one being that there's too many particles here. We need to change the emission mode from rate to shot, so it shoots a single burst of particles. I'm going to change that from 1000 particles down to 3, so now it will only shoot 3 particles straight through our sphere. And right now you're probably thinking, it's quite hard to see. And to fix that, I will create an X-Particles trail. And that trail automatically references our X-Particles emitter and creates trails after our particles. So now you can probably see a bit better that the particles still go straight through our sphere. But with X-Particles, that's a quick and easy fix. We only need to create something called a Follow Surface modifier, which is found up in Modifiers, Motion, XP Follow Surface. Now we need to make sure on our XP emitter that no modifiers are excluded. So the only thing we need to do is go to our follow surface and reference our sphere in there. And then our particles will follow the surface of the sphere. Wonderful. Now, this doesn't quite look like frost yet. Frost kind of grows in a fractally pattern, a little bit like trees. And trees have something called branches. So what do you say we create a modifier, which is found under generate, called XP branch? What this one will do is that it will branch out the particles and create more particles from those particles. But if we play it through now, all that happens is that they move slightly different and then they die after about 75 frames. And that is because under our XP branch modifier, the maximum length is set to 75 frames. That is something we want to change. In fact, I'm going to change the mode from time to distance. And then in distance, I'm going to enter a maximum value of 1,250 and a minimum value of 1000. While I'm changing things up, I'm also going to change what's called bending. And here we have two parameters, one controls how often it bends, and the other one controls the amount. I'm going to change bend in, which is the frequency, from 4.17 frames to 15 frames, and the bend amount I'm going to set to 10 degrees, so it's going to bend a bit less frequently and a bit more. But the whole purpose of creating this branch modifier is to get our trails to branch out. So I'm going to click the Add Branch Object button and it creates a sub-branch object. Playing it through we can see that it immediately starts branching out from the particles. I'm going to change the branch in parameter down to 3, so it branches a bit more frequently. And I'll change the number of branches to 2, so it creates a few more branches every time it branches. But it does look like they're all going a bit too much in the same direction. And that's fixed by changing the branch deviation. I'm going to bring up the maximum to 60 degrees, and then I'm also going to set the minimum to 45 degrees. So now as they branch out, they have a bit more of a spread. But it also looks like they're kind of moving the same speed, which they are, because the branches are using the emitter speed. So I'm going to change that to use a set speed of 100 centimeters. So now as they branch out, we get a much more feathery look to it, which is exactly what we want. It's a bit more frost-like. But that all kind of dissolves here at the end. However, there are a few buttons we could press to fix that. Down here is a parameter called Control Splines. And the bottom spline called Branch Length is the one we want to edit. Because that's what controls the length of the sub-branches along the main branch. So if we just give that a nice and tapered end, that is how it should generate the sub-branches. And that is exactly what it does. Now let's see what buttons we can press on the XP sub-branch object. Here we have pretty much the same parameters as on the master branch. Right now all our sub-branches are travelling a set time, which is not what we want, so we'll change the length method from time to distance units. And because I want my sub-branches a bit shorter than the main branch, I'm going to set the maximum length to 500 centimeters and the minimum length to 150 centimeters. 
I think these sub branches are all a little bit too straight. I want them to wibbly wobble a bit more. So I'm going to change the bending to bend over 10 frames and the mount to 15 degrees. So that just makes it all look a little bit more natural and random. But to really make this look like frost, we need to add a heck of a lot more detail. So let's add another sub branch object. And straight away, you can see that it goes quite a little bit crazy and starts generating insane amounts of branches. So let's tweak some of the settings for that. Instead of generating branches every 4.17 frames, I wanted to generate branches on every frame. And I don't want it to generate just one branch. I want it to generate two at a time from the base and from the tip. Now let's also change the branch speed from emitter speed to source particle speed. So it inherits the speed of the previous branch. Still goes quite crazy quite quickly and the frames per second are dropping muy rápido. And that's because there's too many branches going on for too long. So let's go into our final sub branch here and change the length of the branches. I'm going to change it from time to distance units again and 50 centimeters is long enough and 25 centimeters is short enough. I will also disable the bend completely on these. So this time when we play it through, it goes a lot less crazy and it looks a lot more like frost. If anything, I think they're all a little bit too close to each other and it looks a bit too tidy. So I'm going to change the bend deviation on these as well. I'm going to change it from a maximum of 30 up to a maximum of 90. So now we're going to get a much better spread of these that so they're going to go crisscross across each other like crazy. If anything, it looks a little bit too messy right now. So I will turn up the minimum deviation value to somewhere around 60 degrees and turn down the maximum to probably around 80. So we still get a full spread and it's looking quite like frost, but it's just a little bit less random. We're nearly done with the animation for this now. The only thing I need to do is to have these sub branches taper off towards the tips as well. So we'll just go into the control splines and draw a similar shape to the one we had in the other one. Something a bit feathery looking, which will make it taper off towards the end. Now to render this, I will be using Arnold. So I will bring up the Arnold IPR window. And right now we can only see the sphere. But Arnold plays really nicely with X particles, so I'll just add an Arnold tag to the X particles trail object, and it immediately starts rendering our frost. And it actually does look kind of like frost. If we're moving close, we can see that it's a bit too chunky, and we can fix that by changing the curve width here in our Arnold tag and drawing another little tapered spline here. I'm tapering a lot in this tutorial. Now all that's left for us to do really is to shade this nicely. So I will create a new Arnold material, and in this empty material, I will create a new standard shader node. The material I've been using is quite simple. I just go in and max out the diffuse and backlighting, which is going to make it look quite translucent. Max out specular as well. Bring down the roughness to about 0.2. Check for now. Go into refraction, change the index of refraction to 1.31, approximately light of ice, and check for now use IOR. And that is pretty much all there is to shading this bad boy. So let's add this frost material to our X particles trail. And now that looks like frost. It's casting a little bit of a harsh shadow around it. So let's go into the Arnold tag and uncheck opaque. And that shadow will be just a little bit more accurate. And that is our frost. If you want to render this using standard render instead of Arnold, you can do that with a regular sweep nerves and using a circle spline as a profile. It's going to be a little bit slower to work with, but it'll do. And the beauty of this frost is that it's going to work on pretty much any object. Not only will it work on spheres, it's also going to work on cubes and pretty much anything from bunnies to Buddhas. But now the time has come for me to thank you for your time. And of course, as always, stay frosty, home skillets. Why,